Are you guys ready to graduate? <laughs> you know, Dr. Stanley took a chance on me in um, giving these commencement remarks today. Because you might not know this, but I was the Mich Michigan State homecoming grand marshal for the parade this year. And in its 160 year history, it's only the second time the parade has been canceled. <laughs> so I've been scared to death for all of you. You know, will Breslin lose power? Will their diplomas arrive on time? But I think we're all good. So recently I was listening to um, a show I like to listen to on Sunday mornings on NPR called Puzzles. And this is a show where you try to figure out word puzzles. And on this particular morning, a contestant called in and she was asked to describe herself. And she said, I am a homemaker, a mother of four, and a violinist. And when I heard that, I thought, here's what I want to say to the graduates, that we are all more than one thing. And what's important, what I wish I had known when I was sitting in your chair, is to own all of who you are. I needed, to, I needed help to make peace with my whole identity when I was in my 20s and 30s. And help came from a really unlikely place, as it often does. I'll get to that story in a moment. But I spend time here at Michigan State and at other universities, except the one down the road in Ann Arbor. I never set foot in that university. <laughs> Because I want to know you. I want to know what you're thinking. I want to know your heart. And what is fact is that those 25 years of age and younger, most of you, are the most multicultural, multiracial, gender diverse population we've ever known, the workforce has ever known. So you see, you're already more than one thing. Maybe you're Dominican and Puerto Rican. Maybe you're Christian and African. Or maybe you're a homemaker and a violinist. We're all more than one thing. And what is important is to not only claim all these dimensions of ourselves, but to celebrate them. So I was 12 when I started to know the writer in me. I, um, I started writing poems and short stories, and in high school lit class, long-winded papers that I know I got A's on because the teachers just didn't want to read the whole thing. I was that girl. Um, and then I came to Michigan State, and I got a degree in advertising, thinking I could make a living at that, and I could still write. I could be a copywriter, but that never happened. I never worked in advertising, and I never wrote for pleasure once I started working. When I left here, I made my way in career helping to develop cable programming networks. And in my 20s and 30s, I must have moved half a dozen times, each time with increased responsibility and by the time I was 39, I was the chief operating officer of a network I'd helped to start up with hundreds of employees. And I'd always kept journals, but truthfully, reading the entries from that phase of my life is hard. Many are barely legible, because at that point, I was using alcohol to numb and quiet the writer who still wanted to be heard. So by every outer measure, I was incredibly successful. But by the measures that value integrity, wholeness, I was failing. So as I said, help came from a really unlikely place. My father had passed away, 
and my sister was cleaning out his drawers, and she found his war diary from the Second World War. It was this little brown book that had my stretch in the service embossed on the cover. Well, none of us kids even knew that it existed. He'd written almost daily from when he was in boot camp in Fort Blanding, Florida, through to when he was to be deployed to fight in the Battle of the Bulge. At that point, he mailed the diary home to my mother, who was his fiance at the time, and she began writing in it. So much color and drama and romance filled this little book, and I got to know parts of my parents I'd never known growing up, not the least of which was they were writers too. This little book fleshed out multi-layered people I hadn't known before. And I thought to myself, they're still teaching me from the hereafter, whispering, own all of who you are. The way I saw it, they were telling me to be true to my whole identity. So not too long after that, I began writing in earnest again. And since then, I've written two books. And I know I will write until I draw my last breath. So what I want to say, and I hope what you hear, is that our most urgent and noble work is to know, accept, and love all of who we are. All means your heritage, your roots, how you're made, your hopes and dreams. All means your inner life as well as your outer life. All means your gifts, those bright and shiny parts of you that remind you, I'm really proud to be who I am. But all also means the shadows, the parts that remind you you're out of alignment not being true to your full potential. You need to claim those parts too, so you're accountable first to yourself and then to others. Accountable to living a life that's integrated. For me, being accountable meant claiming that alcohol had become an overshadowing shadow. And I needed help, which I asked for and got. And you know what the most amazing things I learned from that experience? First, if you're willing to be vulnerable enough to say, I am all of these, light and shadow, the light in you will shine brighter. And two, asking for help is not weakness. It's an act of courage. Asking for help is an act of courage. The poet Joy Davidson said, if we should ever become brave, what on earth would become of us? Well, from those of you I've already met, I would say you're already the most honest, bravest, most forthright generation of young women and men we've ever known. Stay honest. So now it's time, as you leave here and become a part of there, to claim with pride your integrity, your identity, and especially your heart. Because then it's yours to break open to its fullest. Thank you. Congratulations. Dr. Stephen Shu, Senior Vice President for Research and Innovation, will present this afternoon's honorary degree candidate. Ms. Packard, will you please join me? <laughs> President Simon, it's my honor to present Susan Packard for the honorary degree Doctor of Humanities. You are an entrepreneur author and role model. A College of Communication Arts and Sciences and Honors College alumna, you earned your bachelor and master's degree in advertising in 1977 
1979. You were co-founder of Scripps Networks Interactive and assisted in the creation of television networks that have become household names, including CNBC, HGTV, Food Network, and DIY Network. HGTV became one of the fastest growing networks in cable history and today brings home and garden joy to more than 99 million U.S. homes and 170 countries and territories. A top contributor to the cable and telecommunications industry, you were inducted into the Cable Hall of Fame in 2008 and named Woman of the Year by Women in Cable Telecommunications, among numerous other accolades. Leveraging your personal experiences, today you write, speak, and work with individuals who are curious about their promise and motivated to grow their potential. You have authored books covering topics from strategies for women leading in the workplace to growing one's emotional intelligence for personal fulfillment and success. For exemplifying Spartan values and inspiring success, I am pleased to award you the honorary degree of Doctor of Humanities from Michigan State University.